welcome back I've got my crank ready now it's all cleaned up and ready to go back in got my new bearings and the blocks all ready to go up the front here you can see actually a couple of the original 3TG bearings the top half has an oil groove and the bottom is just solid I believe Toyota did this to reduce the noise I'm in two minds about this, I actually like the idea of having the oil groove all the way around uh, these bearings are actually made by Kimiri they're made from a F112 material which is typically used in sort of performance engines uh, that material can withstand a high load so time will tell whether it's worth the money or not but I, I think uh, they do look very good once you've got everything ready you want to make sure that the bearing faces in the block in the journals there are very clean of oil I normally wipe them down with alcohol or you could use methylated spirits uh, once that's all wiped out it's just a matter of lining the tab up from the bearing with a tab in the block make sure the oil hole lines up and just gently push them down it's a good idea to have gloves on uh, for me I'm going to measure the gap between these bearings and the crank so not only I don't put oil behind the bearing I don't put oil on the face of the bearing while I'm measuring that gap either you want it to be dry so I've got all the bearings in drop the crank in gently try not to rotate it give those uh, bearing journals just one one last clean install the bearings in the in the caps same way as the block uh, you will note that this has an oil hole doesn't line up to anything on that cap so obviously that doesn't matter uh, they're all ready to go um, to measure the clearance I'm using what's called plastic gauge you can see it there it's just a fine bit of plastic what you do is when you put the cap on depending on the clearance that piece of plastic will squash out and there's a bit of a, a measuring device on that plastic gauge we'll show you later and you can determine what the gap is so I'm hoping for around one and a half to two thou so I've put that plastic gauge under each of the journals oops made a bit of a mistake here you can see <laughs> drop the socket in there which is a bit of a pain uh, could be worse I suppose uh, couldn't really turn the engine over at this point because I just had the crank half in anyway bit of messing about and it come out. Once um, I got that socket back, tightened everything up, you want to tension it up to the right specs and then you undo everything again, gently remove the caps and what you'll be left behind with is the plastic gauge which has been squashed out onto the journal and you can faintly see it there on that journal. Uh, in a moment I'll show you how to measure that so here are the widths, you line the widths up with your plastic gauge which you can see there it's a bit hard to see in this photo but it's actually two thou which um, I'm happy with that, I think that's fine in the end of the crank there's a little bearing, it's a 6001 bearing you may as well change this, uh, it's not a big deal it's what the, crank, uh, the gearbox shaft sits in and if it's not in good nick you can get a bit of a whining noise raw purple assembly lube that's what I've choos chosen to use it's a very good lubricant now that I know the gaps you want to take the crank out clean the plastic gauge off and put some of this assembly lube on each of the bearing faces and there's no need to use a great deal because at the end of the day you don't have much gap you're just going to get it all over the place if you put too much so I like to just have enough to sit into that little oil groove uh, once I've done that get the crank get it to sit in there and you'll see just carefully without damaging anything you can tell the difference it makes with a bit of lube there how freely that's turning once that's in there's also two thrust bearings which sit on the middle journal uh, you can see just here there's a groove on each side and that groove is only on one side of this bearing and it needs to face towards the crank as you can see here put that in the first one always goes in easier because you have more clearance put a bit of assembly lube on the second one and you probably got to push the crank over a little bit and 
to get that one in properly. There we go. Once that's done, assembly lube on the other uh, on the other bearing un under the cap. Put them all down slowly and gently. Again, the center one has a thrust bearing. Make sure the grooves are facing the crank. Put that one in. And once you've done that, when you put the bolts in, you need to make sure you put oil on the bolts. I wouldn't put ARP lube on it, uh, just general motor oil, because that's what Toyota's determined their torques on. And you put oil on the thread, as well as underneath the head of the bolts. Doesn't need a lot. Um, so do that to all of them, screw them in, and in the uh, 3T GTE manual, uh, it it does tell you what torque you need. So if we look here, it's actually between 53 and 63. So what I do, in the right order, I start off at about 40 pounds, and then I go to 50, and then I finish up the tension at 60 pounds. Once that's all done, what you do want to do is check the thrust clearance. So you can see that screwdriver just on the right hand side. What I'm doing is just pushing the crank over to the right to create the clearance and you can see there it's two thou. Once it's done, the crank should move easy like this, just with one finger. If it doesn't, you need to take the crank out and find out what's going on. One of the last things, just put the rear crank seal in. You don't want to put any oil around that outer face. I, I like using the old seal to sit on top to help hammer it in. Uh, once that's in, I uh, bought, a, bought a new gasket for it and uh, obviously fitted it onto the back of the engine. To do this you need to take it obviously off of the uh, engine stand. Bit of assembly lube around the back of the crank, bit of assembly lube in the lip of the seal and once that's all done just bolt it up the crank will be a bit harder to turn with this in there because there's a bit more resistance around that seal uh, but now this cranks in all the clearances are right and the next stage will be balancing up the pistons and rods before installing them